what did y'all is EJ O E business. All right, man. So you see, you saw the title. All right. What we're going to be watching, I'm going to be doing a reaction. What we're going to be watching is Fox News. We're going to be watching Tucker Carlson. All right. He's very, 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 very famous news anchor in the U.S., especially on Fox News. To help you out, Fox News, let me see. Fox News, they're Republicans, which they say they're the right. All right. So that's Donald Trump's side. Okay, so then the Democrats that they call the left, that's Obama's side, you know, which Obama, obviously he isn't president now. Now we have Joe Biden. All right, so that's that. Okay. So you see the title of this. This is on Fox News. I don't like them at all. They're not racist, but I just feel like they just, they just don't see it. I guess they, it seems like they just don't see the problem with things. Like they see the problem with like, let's just use race. They see it, but they don't admit it. It's, it's stupid. Anyways, let's see this. All right. Let's see this. I can't, I cannot wait to hear this all right hey i know a number of south africans some of them very liberal for whatever it's mm. worth i've never met mm. one who will defend the government in south africa it's corrupt it's it's yeah. clearly racially motivated right. in the way that it acts trump tweets a question about the behavior of the south african government last night and all of a sudden he's a bigot for questioning it and the left finds itself on the same side as ramaposa like do they really want to be there do you think no, and actually it's ridiculous the way they try to object to what he's saying. Uh, you know, some of the people who didn't like either your report or uh, the president's tweet were saying, oh, well, you know, farm killings are at a 19-year low in South Africa. The fact that farm killings is a category in South African crime statistics tells you what's going on. And just for the record, even as they're tweeting this rubbish, just last night, a 70-year-old woman was beaten to death well, on a course. South African and farm. And they lie about uh, those stats. Why was that brought up? Why? What, somebody died? They were beaten? That was very, very, very sad and very unfortunate. All right? Why the hell they bring that up right now? What, what kind of point? Man, you see this guy on the right? Whoever the hell his name? I don't even know his name. Anyway, why he acting like he's a reporter out there? Like he lives out there right now. Like he's like literally reporting. You tell me. All right. I mean, the idea that right. we take the stats, the politically charged statistics released by the South African government at face value. Oh, well, I'm fact checking with their statistics. Like, what are right. you, a moron? I mean, right. that's no credible social scientist would take that at face value, obviously. No, no. And, and actually, you should always listen very carefully, Tucker, when someone's telling you to shut up. Because that's well, what do. the left is doing. Uh, and uh, Anne Colt, who was on your show a couple of nights back, Anne gets a bit twitchy because the president isn't doing more as she sees it. But in fact, so the left, they're the Democrats. All right. So the left, they don't like Trump. OK, so just know that. All right. So this is Fox News. Fox News, they don't like the left. All right. The left is the Democrats. They don't like them. They are Republicans. Okay. I don't care about the government parties. All right. I'm independent. Straight up. All right. I see things I like on the Democrat side. I see things I like on the Republican side. I'm not going to choose one. Okay. Because there's things that's good on both sides. All right. Why am I talking about my political party? I do not know. Let's watch this. Actually, by talking about these things, by actually saying uh, it's necessary to expand the conversation and not let yourself be shriveled into the tiny little corner of uh, things that the left will permit you to talk about, uh, that's actually quite important. 
Uh, MSNBC and CNN just think we should, uh, they talk about celebrating diversity, but in fact they want to enforce homogeneity. We're only exactly. allowed to talk about the same things and only allowed to have the same uh, perspectives on the, on the same things too. And, and God bless the president uh, for occasionally wanting to talk about something MSNBC doesn't want to talk about. Exactly. Shut up and obey. That is their program. Mm. Mark, thank you for that. Insightful as always. Thanks a lot, Tucker. So we just said last night on the show, we highlighted what is a remarkable and very sad story. More than a quarter century after the end of apartheid, South Africa once again becoming a place where an entire group of people is targeted for discrimination and violence on the basis of their skin color. We oppose that, obviously. It was wrong 25 years ago. It is wrong now. It is wrong wherever and whenever it happens. So we call the State Department to get their view of what is currently happening in South Africa because America's moral leadership still does matter. They told us they didn't care. Confiscating property without compensation is fine, they said, in effect, <clears throat> because South Africa was, quote, a strong democracy, whatever that means. Pretty shocking. We're not the only ones who found that answer hard to believe, by the way. The Washington Post insinuated today that we made that up. Unfortunately, we did not. The president saw our segment last night, and he tweeted this response to it, quote, I have asked Secretary of State Pompeo to closely study the South Africa land and farm seizures and expropriations and the large-scale killings of farmers. Which this was in 2018, all right? This was back in August of 2018, just to let you know, all right? So, not lately. I should say that we did talk about the land seizures on the show last night. We did not address the killings that he referred to. We did mention the threat of violence. But in any case, today... The State Department elaborated on the president's tweet. Here's part of it. I should mention that the expropriation of land without compensation, our position is that that would risk sending South Africa down the wrong path. Uh, we continue to encourage a peaceful and transparent public debate about what we consider to be a very important issue, and the South Africans certainly do as well. So, I mean, that was kind of tepid, I guess. It's not going to solve the problem, but it's basically good news. Pushing back against racial discrimination is always worth doing. And yet, for some reason, a reason no one really explained, luminaries in the media disagreed. They were offended by that. In an Orwellian turn, various news outlets suggested it was somehow racist to oppose the racist policies of the South African government, even Nazi-like. Watch. He goes to race. And what better way than to give this neo-Nazi propaganda that white farmers <laughs> are being killed in South Africa, when in fact that is not true, not based on them being white. So show that clip to anyone who knows South Africa, who lives there. How do you guys feel about um, what he just said? Let me know, all right? I hope you guys still watching this, all right? I'm going to not stop anymore, maybe. All right, let's go. And see how they respond. They'll laugh bitterly. It's ludicrous. It's, an, it's a lie. The president of the country, Cyril Ramaphosa, has pledged to change South Africa's constitution in order to legalize the seizure of property without compensation. That's currently being debated in the parliament in South Africa. Even now, the government is trying to confiscate two game farms after the owners refuse to sell at a fraction of the market price. Everyone in the country understands what these are. They're racial attacks. Okay, say defenders of the South African government in this country. But previous generations in South Africa, under the apartheid government, also seized land on racial grounds. And by the way, that is absolutely true. They did do that. And it's one of the reasons that so many decent people in this country and around the world opposed apartheid. Apartheid was awful and wrong. Things have changed, though. Now our elites endorse the idea of a racial spoil system. And that's the scariest part. It's far more ominous than whatever the corrupt and incompetent government of South Africa is doing. Our ruling class now believes in collective punishment. That is the opposite of justice. Nobody is alleging that individual farm owners in South Africa stole their land. Instead, the claim is that people who resemble them did, and that's enough. Our elites see no problem with that standard. That should worry you a lot. If you got mugged, how would you feel about imprisoning someone who just happened to look like the mugger? How about the mugger's children? Should they be punished too? If those sound like insane questions, that's because they are insane questions. In the West, we punish only the guilty. Hey, I kind of agree with what he's saying now, which I don't know why I agree. So maybe I don't. I don't know. I'm going to pay attention because, you know, Tucker, he does have me kind of doze off sometimes. So a lot of this is for you guys. Okay. I'm still listening, but you see how I kept messing up. 
I, it does matter. Nice guy. We do not punish our descendants or everyone with the same hair and eye color. For more than 200 years, pretty much everybody in America agreed on those terms. Now, the people who run our country aren't so sure. Increasingly, they think that generational guilt seems like a fine standard. But where does that end up? For a preview, let's go back to South Africa. Julius Malema is the leader of the country's third largest political party. He's one of South Africa's most famous figures. Here's what he said two years ago about murdering people on the basis of their skin color. Watch this. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I'm saying to you, we have not called for the killing of white people, at least for now. I can't That's, guarantee the future. Yeah, but I mean, you'd understand somebody watching that, especially as it gets shared on Twitter, they freak ah, out. It sounds like a genocidal ah, call. Ah, cry babies. Lima <laughs> hasn't become any more moderate. He's become more radical Damn. and not coincidentally, he's become more popular. Here's Malima just a few months ago. When you want to hit them hard, go after a white man. They feel a terrible pain. We are starting with this whiteness. We are cutting the throat of whiteness. Malima, by the way, is not a fringe figure. Okay, so here, check this out. I don't know what um, that uh, shit, not a speech, that the, the talk Julius just had with a lot of people. I'm going to tell you about this news station, okay? They chop up a lot of things. Like, they chop up a lot of things. Like, something, say something can be a long sentence. And they'll have like a couple bad things out. They'll just put the bad things, you know, like that's strictly it. It's like they won't say anything that's good, you know. So like what Julius was just saying right there, that was like, oh, God damn, you know, but I don't know. You know, I haven't seen it. So what they showed, I'm just like, oh, God damn. But I know how this news station is. They cut up a lot of things just to make people look at stuff angry look at things the wrong way just look at things negative i'm done we're about to watch this all the way through in south african politics he's a pivotal figure in south african politics he saw the president's tweet last night and much like the washington post malima was offended by it notice how he makes certain to blame jews for good measure watch this this is from today donald trump is not saying anything we have not heard from white people there's a group of white right wingers who are being trained by Jews in Pretoria to be snipers. Only death will stop us. Not Trump, not poverty, not sanctions. That right there is what our ruling class is now defending. It does make you wonder about their motives. Christian Witten is a former State Department senior advisor under President Trump and George W. Bush, and he joins us tonight. Christian, great to see you. Good to see you. So there are many levels here. South Africa is the most modern, really the only really modern country in Africa. It's a great country. It's worth helping them not slide into Zimbabwe territory. But there's also a moral level. Why is it so hard for the State Department to say, no, that's wrong. We're not for that. Yeah, you have clientitis here, and this happens in what we call the regional bureaus at the State Department. You have an East Asia Bureau, in this case an Africa Bureau, and too often they end up representing the interests of the government, the foreign government to us, as opposed to the real job, which is to represent our interests to them. You saw that in the original statement out of the State Department, very weak, defending South Africa and completely glossing over the murder happening there. Why would, I mean, look, anybody... One of our producers is married to a South African, South Africans working here, of, of all political backgrounds. But you talk to anybody who lives in the country, and the first thing they'll say is, well, why would you take statistics from the government at face value? That's insane. And yet our State Department does. Why aren't they more sophisticated? Or do they know that they're yeah. false? I don't think they know. I think there's a lot of ignorance about this issue. You know, this is one of the sort of unauthorized victim groups around the world. We have authorized ones that we're allowed to be concerned about, um, you know, the uh, various minority groups. But when it comes to the president or other people, the vice president defending Christians in the Middle East, even defending Muslims in Burma, defending Christians in Burma who are also beleaguered, 60 churches burned there, uh, defending Muslims in China, these are not the ordinary victim groups that the left cares about. And that flows over to our State Department bureaucracy at times times, unfortunately. And so you see just not a lot of regard and interest for this. We also don't have a political ambassador yet down in South Africa, which means that our representation down there, frankly, is weak.
Yeah. And by the way, just to be totally clear, I, I, I'm very wary of getting in, too involved in the internal dealings of any of any country unless it directly benefits the United States. So I'm not calling for any dramatic action, but people do listen to what our State Department says, and it seems like it would just be low cost to say you know, the United States doesn't think that you should punish people on the basis of their appearance. Also, we can just tell a very, very uh, topical historical lesson, if you will, and we can without, you know, anything with the military. This nigga look hella weird. Look at him talking. Look at him with his eyebrows. And look at his hair. Terry, with intelligence, just be honest about this. What's going on in South Africa right now happened next door nearby in Zimbabwe. Right. Uh, beginning around 2000, Robert Mugabe going after white farmers there. The same stuff where it's a combination of political intimidation and then violence by thugs. They pushed more and more white farmers out. That actually has led to food shortages in Zimbabwe. It became the poorest class. country on planet Earth for a while because of that. So is the president, do you think, going to keep up with this issue, or is it the criticism, do you think, going to slow him down? No, I think, that, you know, across the board, the president has been very good about some of the forgotten people, not only here in the United States, but people who around the world are beleaguered. I mentioned Christians in the Middle East, really no one, aside from Trump, um, speaking up for them, not even the Pope, not anyone like that. So I think you're going to see this. And, um, you know, Pompeo has been, by necessity, very focused, North Korea, Iran, Syria. Right. This is, as you point out, not an area where they're are fundamental U.S. interest at stake, but, but it's, it's worth one saying that's been brought something. to his attention. We're actually doing a segment later in the show with Marco Rubio on Muslims being persecuted in China, because it's not, and I know the reaction is, oh, this is tribalism. It's not, actually. There's a principle here that's worth defending, and we're going to continue to, and I hope the president will. Christian Witten, thank you very much. Thanks, Doc. Oh, gosh. Whatever, man. So, let me say something before this starts. All right, don't start. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. That's really all I have to say. Please tell me what you guys think of this, all right? Let me know what you guys think of this because I am very curious, all right? That's enough. I'm not saying anything. Just let me know how you feel. I will just tell you something. I will tell you something. There's a certain part where I'm like, why? They're reporting like they live there. You guys tell me how you guys feel about it. All right, let me know.